what I really enjoyed about Grateful and what I've really enjoyed about listening to, to Eric on 83 Weeks has been he strikes me as someone who's really enjoying life now. And and when I talk about life, I'm talking about the pure wonder, wonderful parts of life. So like this cover says, oh, kind of nature, his dog, a nice cup of coffee on his veranda in the morning, a sunset, time with his wife. And it was really interesting reading the book because I was really surprised. He seemed to be so settled and at peace with himself. Mm. And then suddenly he gets approached by WWE out of the blue in 2019 completely upends this what is essentially a quite a nice retired life mm. to go back into the the fire of corporate wwe and we all know that it didn't last very long but from your well, from your conversations with eric what, what do you think it was that drew him back to that crazy industry when he seemed quite settled at that point in his life well i think it was more of a case of for whatever reason at that time wwe felt like he would be the appropriate person to be in that new role as the executive director for SmackDown at the time. If you remember, this is when, you know, the big announcement was made that Paul Heyman's going to be in a similar role for Raw. And, you know, quite unbelievable, really, when you think about this was 2019. Yeah. It was eight, 18 years since ECW and WCW. And it was almost like, wow, okay. So we've, we've got, you know, Vince McMahon, Paul Heyman, and Eric Bischoff working together in this capacity. Um, but I, I think, you know, as he talks about in the book, you know, again, he's, he's very honest as to why it doesn't, doesn't work out. I mean, I, I know that he has a lot of feelings about it, but rather than saying, you know, these guys didn't give me a chance, I was, you know, hitting the ball out of the park and they just decided to, to send me home after four months. Again, he puts his hand up and basically says, and you know, people have to read about it, but basically, uh, reflects on maybe what, from his standpoint, some of his shortcomings may have been. And I think what you just said there in terms of setting up the question probably also gives us the answer in terms of um, he was in a completely different mindset. His his daily routine was very different than it, than it had been running WCW in the 90s. He was at a much different point in his life. And so all of a sudden to move to the other side of the country and live in a completely different environment and be subject to those corporate pressures and not be your own boss for the first time in many, many years, um, you know, that would that would be a rough transition for anybody. Um, so, you know, uh, I think that's, uh, it's one of those footnotes that sort of gets lost to history. Now, I think you, you can often forget. And even I do sometimes that that, that even happened because it was just such a short period of time. Yeah. But, um, but, but again, I, I think, uh, he does give you the inside scoop. He does tell you about some of the things that were said behind the scenes and, um, some of the blowups he had with Vince, but also, um, you know, it's pretty reflective about it also.